Okay. Are we ready? Mm -hmm. My pain, sadness, and resentments gives me my strength. My strengths ruin my mind, body, and soul. I've been trapped all my life, not by man or cages, but by my own emotions. Where I've been, what I've seen while traveling inside myself can be summed up by one word. Damn. Pain manifests itself into growth and peace only when you cope with the emotion of it the right way. That was my room right there, the farthest window up top. One night, my father drove out and uh, just made it right here. And then, you know, some guys stopped him and they had words. And uh, we heard four or five shots. And uh, he was laying right there. It, it was really scary, but uh, my mom came back in and said he's going to be OK. And after she said that, we were pretty good. Man, this is amazing. This never happened when I was in the neighborhood. But my question is, what are we celebrating? Life. We're celebrating life. Because if we're celebrating the past, I don't know if that's a good thing. If we're celebrating now, I don't know if that's a good thing. If we're celebrating the future, I think it can be a good thing. But it starts with you. It starts with our youth. And it starts with us as adults, as parents to stop smoking in front of our children, cursing in front of our children, drinking in front of our children. Pittsburgh's special to me because it gave me so much, but there's a lot of hatred there. The closest people to me feel that I owe them something. When we were in Pittsburgh, I had a cousin that said he was gonna kill me because I wouldn't give him any money. There should be four or five guys on my left side that made it, a doctor, attorney, a lawyer, there should be a councilman. There should be a, a teacher, a professor, business owners standing up here with me. But right now I'm by myself. Brandon Marshall also stands alone on the football field. Hey, coach, coach, that don't matter right now. That don't matter right now. Hey, I, I, all these long faces, I don't know what's going on, but we got to, this is our season right here. Marshall is the emotional leader and star playmaker for the Chicago Bears. Marshall's in. There was nothing going to deny Brandon Marshall. In the past seven seasons, only Wes Welker has more receptions, and only Calvin Johnson has more receiving yards. I like me, Marshall, man. He got heart. At six foot four, 230 pounds, Marshall first rose to prominence in Denver and Miami. His nickname, The Beast, you know, they can't tackle him. How I play the game, fighting for every single yard. That energy, that attitude to come out, that comes from this neighborhood right here. But again, you got to be able to control it. And unfortunately, a lot of us that come from these type of areas, we don't. Marshall's passion and determination has led to many spectacular moments. But in his early years, some foolish ones, too. A late marker down, and then Marshall kicked the ball. You know, he had a draft party. Back then, you had the first three rounds, and then you had the rest the next day. I said, you know, you're having a draft party on the first day. So, you know, you think you're going pretty high, huh? Both sides of the family are there, and there's a thousand of us, probably. And uh, I didn't get drafted. My brother and I cried, like, literally, two grown men in the bathroom crying. I don't even know why I was so devastated. I guess the rejection, you know, the letdown. For years afterward, 
His fragile psyche and many faces mystified him and those closest to him. I wasn't able to say, come on, Brandon, get out of that tree. Come on, Brandon, that's enough. Got to the point where Brandon was his own driver of his own car. He personally has destroyed, let's see, maybe five of my vacations. For a greatest guy as he could be and, and as charming as he could be and as intelligent he was, there were certain times where a switch would just flip and you're like, I don't know this guy. He wore out his welcome in two cities and was once suspended by the league. He was with teammate Darren Williams the night he was murdered. After that, I went out and got a gun. I remember the police report saying that they're looking for a white Tahoe. Every Tahoe I saw, like I would do a U-turn or a legal U-turn and look in the car like to see if that was the guy that I saw. And when he wasn't looking for trouble, he seemed to find it. The story that's out there right now is that I slipped on a McDonald's bag. The real part of the story, I threw a punch and my arm went through a television, okay? I cut an artery. I mean, I could have lost my life. After years of resisting, Marshall was examined, and an explanation came into focus. Borderline personality disorder is a disorder for people who are extremely sensitive to what they perceive as rejection. And they feel like their welfare, their future, their hopes for a good life depends upon finding an exclusive partnership with somebody else. And the demands required for such a partnership almost always end in disaster. I remember having a conversation with my dad when, you know, this is probably two years after I was diagnosed, and he was like, ain't nothing wrong with you, boy. <laughs> nothing wrong with me. Did you read the clippings? Like, what, what do you mean nothing's wrong with me? Up next, the transformation of a player on the brink of self-destruction. Brandon Marshall, a football life, one of the NFL's great turnaround stories. Say something to the people. Right here. Talk right here. Get out of my face. <laughs> we are polar opposites. Um, you know, when Brandon's out of practice, he wants the cameras on him. He'd be mic'd up every game if they let him. He'd be mic'd up every practice if they let him. Listen, I know you're mic'd up. I know you got your cameras here. Just get the hell away from me. <laughs> Right. I don't have time for this. No way. Look to your right. I'm having just wait to the camera. No. I'm, this I'm, is your only appearance. I, I will leave you alone for the rest of the day. That's not true. Look I've, got to do, I've got to do an interview just tomorrow. Just look and wave. All right. That, I need more than that. All right, go away. I got work to do. Give me a little more than that. I got work to do. Tell the camera this hello. Is, this is not a movie. We are playing football right now. This hey, is practice. This is, this is fun. Go away. See, we got... <laughs> he loves uh, press conferences. Brandon wanted to accompany me today, so you guys can ask him all the questions. Why is it always the quarterback to come do these big old press conferences? God, Lee, I want to see this ugly face every day. You know, I'm the opposite. You know, he, he can have all the press conferences. He can do all the interviews. He seeks it out, and I probably go the opposite way. You mic up every game? No. Were you mic up like six games this year? I'm gonna get. You gotta I gotta get a challenge. prime time game. We're, all, we're, we're gotta take advantage of the free marketing. Free marketing. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to rebuild my reputation you know, here, you man. Know you have to play well during your mic up game. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah, just throw me the ball. We're the couple that really love each other, but shouldn't be together. <laughs> like, I mean, we go at it. Don't ever yell at me like that. Where the hell were you going on the streets? I mean, Jay, just look at me. Don't do that. Just look at me. So just like, just like take shots and let me jump. 43 is vertical. You might as well use it. 43 now, huh? Thirty-six. I don't listen to him. You know? I have some great ideas. I'm sure you do. I would describe it as uh uh, Tom and Jerry, you know, it's, you know, like they, like Tom and Jerry really loved each other, but at the same time, they was always at each other. There's like very rare moments where you kind of see the love between them. Hey, you gonna get your helmet? Are you gonna get your helmet? No, I'm gonna play without it. They joke on each other and play around and irritate each other. 
There's pictures where Brandon kissed Jay on the field last year. They are like a married couple. I mean, it's, it's hilarious. They couldn't be more opposite, but they're so similar in a lot of ways. What do you say? What do you say? Brandon Marshall and Jay Cutler first met as part of the 2006 Broncos draft class. It wasn't instant chemistry. I felt like the, you know, I was a little jealous because it was Jay Cutler who went in the first round. Then it was Tony Scheffler, our tight end, went in the second round. We had no third round pick. Then they drafted me, but Jay and Tony connected. So I'm like, guys, what about me? The week Cutler was named the Broncos starting quarterback, Marshall reintroduced himself. I gave him the statistics of Peyton Manning and Marvin Harrison. I said, I think they're around 140 uh, touchdowns as a duo. I said, we're going to beat that. We're going to start this week. This is where you start to make your legend. Let's wait and see what the kid can do. Protection breaks down. Pass is going to be caught. This is going to be Brandon Marshall with a lot of room to run. Marshall squares the big receiver, runs to a tackle. He's on his feet, foot race. Brandon Marshall, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5. He's got a Denver touchdown. This is the best play of my career. Like, I'm talking about Little League, high school, college, pro. Best play of my career, still to this day. Jay and I, we met, and we had this moment, and I was like, that's the first one. I said, we got 139 more to go. Some guy painted it for me. I got Jay one, and I hung mines up in my house. The Cutler to Marshall touchdowns kept coming. In a nationally televised game, two days after the election of Barack Obama, Cutler heard the Marshall Plan for how he'd celebrate their next one. I'm gonna take an all white glove, paint the other side black, and basically it's like, it's not about black or white, we're one. If he scored, he was gonna put it on and then put his hand in there like a fist. And he's like, what do you think? I go, awful idea for numerous reasons. I could give you a hundred reasons why this is, this is a terrible idea. 118 to go. The crowd is deathly silent here. Second down, blitz on the way. Cutler steps and throws. He wants Marshall. Brandon Marshall in the end zone with a Denver touchdown. And the Broncos again have reclaimed the lead. And all of a sudden he starts ripping into his pants. I'm like, what the, what is this guy doing? Like my mind's made up the whole game. I'm just thinking about making this political statement. Brandon Stokes is like, no. And he just grabs me. I wanted to kill Brandon Stokely, one of my favorite teammates. But at that moment, I was like, you just stopped a historical moment. And I was like, B, like, we just we talked about this. What were you thinking? He's like, oh, I just thought it'd be a really good idea. He had the glove stuck in his pants for the entire game. Coming up, the Broncos married couple go their separate ways. When Jay was going through his deal, that was like devastating. In Brandon Marshall's senior year at Central Florida, he had nearly 1,200 yards receiving and 11 touchdowns. I mean, he was basically a man amongst boys. There was some questions at that time, what type of guy he was, how hard he would work. And I'll be honest with you, the reason why I really looked into uh, Brandon Marshall is my, my son was at Houston at that time, and he says, hey, we have him off the board. We're not going to draft him. I just spent a day with him. I can't tell you what a great guy he is, you know, to spend with him. I worked him out. He's a freak of nature. You know, I'm one to not throw a guy off the board quite as quick. You can stop, right? Mike Shanahan and the Broncos drafted Marshall in the fourth round. You got to know who you got, Brandon. You got to know who you got. Come on, Brandon Marshall. He proved to be a huge talent and just as big a head case. He can't have one. He can't have it. Come on, you got to focus, focus. You knew when you had two, three days of just sanity and things were going nice and easy that there was going to be a blow up. He was going to be late or he was going to kick a football or he was going to, uh, you know, make an outburst in a meeting. We just knew we had to get him to Sunday. But then even on Sundays, there were lapses. 
he would have an out of body experience and lose his mind. Marshall goes to the back of the end zone. A little excessive celebration, you think? We'd pick up 15, and I'd talk to him on the sideline. He'd be, you can't do this stuff. Like, you're killing us. He'd be like, I know, I know. We talked about it a couple days ago. He couldn't help himself. Marshall's erratic behavior on and off the field continued. His supporters began to lose their patience. You know, I defended him for a long time. And then at one point, I came out in the media, and I said, hey, you know, he, he's got to figure it out. He's got to grow up. Enough's enough. He's not a bar's leg. He's not doing those things that, uh, that other people do. It's just uh, something about him. He's always into something, you know? So uh, I was like, Brandon, I mean, they're going to quit giving you chances around here, and you're going to have to go somewhere else, and that's going to be a shame. And Brandon got mad at me. You know, he was like, you've got to defend me and, and stuff. I go, B, like, I can defend you to a certain point, and we get past that point, um, you know, I can't anymore. And he didn't understand that for a long time. He, he struggled with that. It caused some tension between us, for sure. you got to meet him. Yeah, you got to meet well, him. Well, I mean, but there's nowhere to go. Right. Like he, Marshall's he's... biggest rift in Denver came when Josh McDaniels took over as coach, and Jay Cutler was traded to Chicago. When he put his house on the market, I put my house on the market. <laughs> See, if he's out of here, I'm out of here. I would wake up every day and call my agent. Are they going to trade me? Are they going to pay me? What's going on? What's going on? Every single day. Marshall promised himself he would try to put his contract issues behind him. I said, I just want to get through this practice. I don't want to cause any dis disruptions. You know, uh, I'm just going to just go out there and ball. I said, I got to do this. I didn't even make it through warm-ups. Coaches throw me the ball, I'm batting the ball down. <laughs> I catch one ball, then I punt it, boom. When I realized that Brandon was in trouble and he needed help, we were in Denver. Listen, I'm running a deep out because he's playing five. Navy, Navy. No! Navy. No! And I start noticing Brandon with these outbursts yeah. and these hissy fits. Come on, I told him! Come on, man! I told you! It's a oh. touchdown! It's a touchdown! I told you! It's a touchdown! Oh! I knew there was something else up, and it was just a matter of getting to the bottom of what it is. We approached Brandon, and we're like, there's a problem. You got to stop. I mean, still not thinking that there is something clinically wrong. We're all under impression that Brandon can control this. They couldn't even get anywhere. I was just like, no. You know, I want stability, I want security, you know, I deserve this, and blah, 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 blah. At the recommendation of NFL player development, Marshall visited McLean Hospital outside Boston. Whatever I asked, he would want to get in a fight about. He was just very hostile and um, non-disclosing. I sat there for a day, and we went back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. All I did was do this point the finger at everyone else. I didn't feel I could actually get to know him very well. I wasn't expecting to see him again. Despite catching 100 passes for a third straight year, including an NFL record 21 in one game, the Broncos had seen enough of him, too. Not even his old coach, now in Washington, wanted to sign him. I said, Brendan, I'd love to take you. But I'm just afraid. Washington is a big city. I said, I can't take the chance. He said, I know where you're coming from, but Coach, I'm, I'm going to show you. I'm going to be something special. Marshall found a spot in Miami. But it wasn't long before he was causing trouble there, too. Marshall just threw the football towards the sideline and a flag down. You can't just pick up the ball and throw it off the field. This is unbelievable. The next week, the Dolphins hosted the Bears. He was all fired up. I think he wanted to prove that he could play at a high level without me. He caught one on our sideline. He throws it to Jake Cutler, his former teammate in Denver. That's just downright stupid. It's stupid. You want to be an all-pro? You want to be a star in this league? Act like one. Coming up, Marshall finally discovers what's wrong with him. This is huge, you know what I mean? Like, for me, man, I'm, like, saving my life right now.
So Brandon always likes it when I give like the whole rundown. He's like, do it, babe. Um, I have my BA in psychology, my BS in criminal justice, and I'm certified in behavioral forensics, crime scene investigation, and behavioral profiling. My dream was to be a forensic psychologist one day and work for the FBI. So I did that at UCF, where we met. So Mishi knew me in college when I was very in tune with Mishi, all of her emotions connected, very caring and loving. When Brandon Marshall was struggling in Denver, Mishi moved in with him. We probably enjoyed each other for a year. The next couple of years was just hell. He would come home and just go to his room and wouldn't really talk much, wouldn't really have much to say. I remember one day coming home, sitting on the couch, and she just got up and walked off. And I looked, I'm like, what's going on? She started crying. There's no connection, you're not affectionate, you're just not there. She said, you know, I want my Brandon back. I want my Brandon back. Um, and it was because the Brandon that I knew wasn't the Brandon that I was getting. He was a recluse. I was so hurt at the time, I didn't even know why I was so isolated. You know, I didn't even know I was depressed. It wasn't like he was being distant to be mean. It was he was being distant, but he was hurting. So I wanted to help. I wanted to be there. I wanted to not fix it, but I just wanted to understand it and help him understand it. I love her to pieces. I told her, run for the hills until he gets well or wants to do better. What are you doing? At their Miami home, Brandon suffered a severe cut in his stomach. Mishi called 911. Brandon told police he fell on a broken vase. The police didn't believe him and arrested her. Charges were later dropped. While Mishi was taken into custody, she left a message with Brandon that affected him deeply. Somebody has to learn from us. Somebody's gonna learn from us. You know, it's just one thing to see yourself going across the ticker and breaking news and your life story flashing, but to take someone else down, that's another. Um, I mean, I really can't even explain that pain. Marshall took a long look at himself and recounted an exchange he had with teammate Ricky Williams. I went to Ricky, I said the NFL sent me to do a clinical evaluation, St was only up there for a day, but I saw you work with that same, the same doctor, Dr. Gunderson. And I said, you know Dr. Gunderson? He said, yeah, I went to talk to him. And I said, wow, he really, you know, he really helped me a lot and he was a great person to talk to. And if you get an opportunity to, to spend more time with him, I think you should really do it. He could really, he could really help. And that's exactly what Brandon did. Well, we had it right now. Just, uh... Getting help, that's basically it. I mean, there's no way to sugarcoat it. This time, it was not because the NFL asked him to. He was troubled enough by his behaviors and the difficulties they were creating for him. I said, I have three months to do this before the season starts. I'm gonna spend every single day conquering this. Now, if I don't, I had a letter prepared to send to the Dolphins in the NFL that I was gonna walk away from football until I got it right. You ever heard of B? PD, you know what that stands for? You know, he said, he, you know, from what he can see so far is that um, uh, borderline personality disorder. Most people feel if you have a serious psychiatric problem that it's going to be treated with medications. Borderline personality disorder, there is no medication particularly useful for it. Instead, you change the brain through psychosocial interventions, psychotherapies and social therapies, uh, change the size of the ventricles in the brains the same as medications can. My playbook was borderline personality disorder for clinicians, borderline personality disorder for patients. Went to the library, went to Barnes & Noble, studied the frontal lobe, I studied cognitive behavior. I just sat in group therapy uh, for three months and heard stories of uh, people being suicidal. I witnessed uh, girls and guys' arms cut up because they're self-harming themselves. Um, I saw this. The exciting part is that, you know, I understand it now. I, I understand where it's coming from, and now I can help myself and put myself in better positions. The scary part is that I went through all of this not knowing and, like, man, if I just had a clue, you know, 
I could have avoided so much pain and trouble. I'm thinking, okay, I'm just I'm just in the wrong place at the wrong time or I was around the wrong people. No, it's really it's me. You know what I mean? It's me. Marshall spent three months at McLean Hospital and then returned to football, still a BPD patient. He has to face it every day, but he has some unusual assets. He's got a vocation which he loves and he's good at. The fact that his relationship with Mishi developed into something where he's got a stable support in his life is enormous asset. Thank God she didn't leave Brennan, because that was the driving force. That was the motivation to get itself well. She. Um, had the compassion and the uh, understanding and the strength to really see me through this, you know, uh, to love me. Because um, if it wasn't for her, that was, that was it, you know. Um, I had a lot of strained relationships, so the only love that I, the only little bit of love that I was accepting was from her. Um, yeah. Coming up, Brandon tells the world his secret. And what inspired me, what my wife said before she got arrested, someone will learn from our story. And I thought that was very powerful for someone who's being wrongfully arrested to have that much strength and say. What's the worst game you ever been in? Despite his troubles in Miami, Brandon Marshall found someone he could trust in coach Tony Sperano. It can get hot and heated out on the field, and, and you may hear one voice that can bring you back. I think in a lot of times I was that voice. Nobody cares in this league. There's no sympathy. You've got to be consistent. You've got to come out here and be efficient every single day, because nobody cares. It's hard. I mean, I realize you got to come out here every day, and you got people on your back. I think he understood my pain. He got me. When Marshall returned to the Dolphins, after three months of treatment at McLean Hospital, he went right to Sperano. He told me his story, that he was in Boston, why he was in Boston. He explained it to me pretty clearly, what he was going through, and that was an eye-opening day for me. There wasn't a face of mental health. And at McLean Hospital, I said, I want to be the face of this. Not to put myself on a pedestal, but to uh, shed light on a very dark place. You know, be a voice for people who are being muzzled. And I supported him on that. I really did. But I also told him, Brandon, you understand that not everybody's going to understand this. There's going to be people out there that are closed-minded for whatever the reasons might be. It's your job. OK, if you feel strongly about this and passionate about it, to carry the flag here. I said, son, I don't think this is a good idea. If you go on national TV and tell the world that you are cuckoo, your borderline personality, they're going to look at you as cuckoo. They're not going to look at you the way I look at you, you know? I said, and anything you do is going to be under the microscope from this point on, and they're going to say, aha, it's because of Brandon his borderline personality. I knew it all the time, the person, this, this guy's cuckoo. And I tried to talk him out of the tree, and I'm glad it didn't work. I can't paint or articulate it uh, well enough for you guys to understand uh, how I've been living and how I've affected uh, the people around me. 10% of all cases diagnosed with borderline personality disorder ends in suicide. If things didn't happen exactly the way they happened for me, and I and the program in McLean Hospital was made available to me, I would have threw away my career, and there was a good possibility in my life. As his psychiatrist, I was a little anxious about this, you know. What if he goes out and gives a public statement about borderline personality disorder, and the next day he ends up regressing into his old behaviors. It's not going to be a good picture. If he'd asked me, I would have advised him against it. Nonetheless, his having done it, you know, 
is a wonderful thing for the field, for all of mental illness, but particularly for borderline personality disorder, which is amongst the most stigmatized of mental illnesses. And he's changing that picture uh, every time he speaks about it. So I'm going to share something. You know, I was at McLean Hospital. Um, I was there for three months in an outpatient program. I believe that, you know, this is something no one's talking about. And if I can pass along the wisdom I've gained and help someone. The ideology behind my disorder, I really believe that I, I was a product of my environment. There was a bunch of people in my family that, that you know, that put a, you know, I was the atlas, you know, put all everything on my shoulders and I didn't know how to deal with it. That's living and walking in purpose. Uh, Brandon has changed a lot, you know, and, and it's, it's funny. We seem to talk about everything now, but. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Look nice. Thank you. Mishi had her Brandon back. And his old quarterback was telling his general manager he wanted a reunion too. I would be in Phil's ear, I'd be in the other scouts ear, like, hey, you know, Brandon Marshall, like you take a chance on him. I mean, he he's he's an unbelievable guy. He's turning his life around. He was like, let's do it. Let's 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 get you traded. And I'm like, that's an awesome idea. In March 2012, Marshall was traded from Miami to Chicago. So immediately I called Jay, no answer. And I'm like, he has to know. He had to stand on the table. No way the Chicago Bears are going to take me with all of my baggage. No way they just did this, right? Call him again, no answer. Text him 20,000 times, no reply. And I'm like, what does this dude don't love me? Is he playing games? Like, Maybe this isn't the place for me. Like, I'm thinking, like, this is going to be this big old reunion. He's going to be happy. Our careers are safe. We're going to Super Bowl. You know, we're going to be, you know, on a football life, you know, like, as a couple. I called him back, and he's like, where, where have you been? I just got off a plane. We just got back from Cabo. He was in Cabo. <laughs> so when he landed, he hit me up, and he was uh, super excited. It's a very special moment for me. Couldn't ask for a better situation, being a Chicago Bear, to be back with Jay Cutler. Wow. Given a fresh start in Chicago, Marshall wanted to remove the cloud over his name once and for all. If you could critique his play, what would you say needs to Im improve on? No, hold on, hold on. Before, before you answer, <laughs> yeah, no, I really want to hear this. She's awesome, but she never really critiques me. But I want to hear something. Please, baby, give me something. As far as the game goes, I, you know, there's drop ball here, there, whatever. <laughs> okay, that might happen. But, but I would say that it's probably moving to the next play. Man. Get your, it's over. Get your... And letting whatever happened yeah. go that's you, that's you. and working on the next thing. Hey, I missed a tackle last game, too. I got a little sad, but you know what? It goes on. Let it go, man. Let's go. Wait. Yeah. Wait. It's not like he's uh, he's cured of, of who he is. It's a daily battle. The difference with him now uh, than before is uh, it would take two, three days for him to come back down. And now, you know, it's a couple minutes and he'll come back over and he'll smile and be like, all right, I'm back. The best way I can explain it, we can be in the same room and something happens. Hold up, hold up, hold up. And it bothers both of us. Hey, coach, get somebody else in there, man. Wasting my time, man. It's terrible, man. Get somebody else in there. But you, because you're, you may be a little healthier than me, you can regulate your emotions faster than I would. Oh, man, no, man. Come on, it was taking 20 minutes to get to the next play. Do you think I want to play 20 minutes either? This is where I learned skills and tools that basically self-regulate myself. What's she thinking about? I'm meditating right now. Take me to that land. Where you at? You see the 40? Just focus there, listen to it. 
the sound, talk what you smell, no. Don't break concentration. I think he's definitely heading the right direction, but there's still some people out there that remember Brandon Marshall year one through four, and that's tough to overcome. But uh, I think if anybody can do it, he can do it. Coming up, Brandon Marshall turns a city green and gives away some green of his own. I've been good for six years. It's time to be great. No better platform, man. Brandon Marshall is back scoring touchdowns with Jay Cutler. Touchdown, Brandon Marshall, what a play! And delighting the home crowds. You know what, I have a chance, man, to leave a legacy, you know, and it's on me. If I continue to stay on this track, look at this, man. But now, he has new fans, too. I really love your community, the biker community, because you guys are tough, you know, but if we can be a little bit more vulnerable and talk about some of our issues in our homes, some of our issues that's going on with us, I think the world will be a better place. This is awesome. Like, this is what mental health looks like right here. Where we're at today is where HIV, the HIV community, the cancer community was 25 years ago. He's almost like a mental health superstar. So everywhere we go, there's somebody who thanks him, thanks us, opens up, tells their story. What is courage? Anyone who catches a ball in the middle of the field in the NFL, waiting to get trifected by a linebacker, cornerback, and strong safety is either brave or crazy, or perhaps both. <laughs> and while risking one's body is scary, risking one's reputation is terrifying. One moment you're a football hero, the next you could be seen as a mental patient with all the stigma that entails. You took a big chance, and I'm here to confirm something that I suspect you already know. You're making a difference. In going public, in one fell swoop, you've helped to humanize the players of the NFL and lift the image of people with mental disorders such as borderline personality disorder. I think he's in an unusual situation because he is such a articulate and charismatic character, but he's also a male football player. It takes it out of the realm of this is for weak people. It is something that people who are remarkable achievers and very likable people can have. Marshall's transformation continues to take shape. Brandon and his wife Mishi have established a foundation to help other people tackle their mental health issues. Even the NFL community has benefited, including former teammate Devon Bess. When he saw some of the stuff that was going on in my life, he initially contacted and reached out to me, and he knew something was, was, was going on. You know, he knew it was out of my character. When you're going through so much stuff in life, it's very important to have a support system around you, especially someone who cares and someone who understands what you're going through. We probably get calls once a week. I mean, we're talking about players, coaches, executives, and, and that's why we say we went from patients to providers. I used to live on Mayflower. I used to live right in this neighborhood. That's all I thought I was, was a football player. That's all they told me I could do was play football. But what I do know is, if you guys have a goal, if you guys dream, and if you work hard, you will be able to do anything that you put your mind to. I've always told Brandon, with what you stand for, be an impact be an earthquake if you're looking to really be the face of mental health. Then you take this into an arena that's been untouched. This is your Jerry Maguire moment. 
please welcome Brandon Marshall and his beautiful wife, Mishi. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Now, as a football fan, Brandon, I remember vividly yeah. some of the issues that you would go gone through with the emotional outbursts, some run-ins with the law, and some domestic incidents as well. But you're here to tell us why now yeah. all of that had kind of evolved in your life and you not knowing this has now put you in a, t a completely different place. Amen. I mean, isn't it amazing that I'm still sitting here? Did you ever think about, you know, this is just too much, I gotta go? Well, of course. Mm -hmm. Of mm -hmm. course, they were definitely difficult, very difficult times. I wouldn't be here if you had left me, girl. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? That's a beautiful story. That is awesome. And you've got some special news I guess well, you want to share with everybody, so I, I, I'd like to know what, what that a, is. What an amazing day for us right now. We're about to sign a $40 million contract, oh. an extension. Oh. Yes. We're going to use this as an opportunity to pledge a million dollars to the mental health community. Awesome. It's not about us. Yes. Good for you. Good yes. for you guys. Yes. Yes. Why do you play this game? Why do you love this game? What is your why? Is it because of the attention? Is it because of money? Is it because of your heart? What is it? Whatever it is, bring it out tonight. By continuing to shine on and off the field, Marshall wants to light up the world lime green, the color of mental health, one city at a time. With time winds up, open middle of the end zone. Touchdown, Bears! Brandon Marshall comes through. Brandon, one up on the right side. And that's where Jay's throwing back shoulder. Throw right side, front pylon. Touchdown, Brandon Marshall. During the games, his TV's on that TV. Every TV in the house is on. So I'm walking through here, and I was like, is that building's lit up? I just cried. I just stood there and I was like, they did that because of Brandon, my Brandon, Brandon Marshall, my son. There is no words that can express the pride, the gratitude. And I told Brandon the other day, you still don't even know what you've done. You have no idea what you've done and what you're doing for people. I went and got some help for my issues too. I'm proud of myself. I stopped recently, stopped smoking. I stopped drinking. So I've been doing some work on myself thanks to my son. I mean, he always said, Mommy, it's thanks to God. No, it's because of you. This is big. This is really big. And I'm just proud. You've dedicated yourself to helping others, and there's nothing better that could be said about anyone. Your fan and admirer, Neil Bakio. <laughs> We have a whole community, 88 million of them. Lime Green, yeah! <laughs> and I really believe that's my purpose in life, to bridge the gap in the mental health community. Words can't explain. To see where he's come from. To see what he's overcome. Football's gonna come and go. But his life as a man, as a husband, as a father. So you just put your come back come on this side. So you see that? There's two. Twins. Twins. Nuts. We want healthy babies, but ideally uh, boys and girls. A boy and a girl. And I'm so proud of what he's accomplished and what he's accomplishing in his journey and finding his purpose. Like, football is, like, that's easy. You know, like, I did, I've done this since I was a baby. To me, that's not success. Like, success to me is being a world changer, you know? But I know the platform will help me do that. So that's why I say football is my platform, not my purpose. How can I use my platform to fulfill my purpose? And I want people to say that he fulfilled his purpose.